Um, well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the latest Filmworks Classroom. Um, I'm Sophia and you can see that I'm a content creator here and I'll be hosting the incomparably brilliant Fabio, uh, our master trainer, who you might have also met before. Fabio has been doing some trips recently on our behalf um, around the US to show what creatives can do with our software. And now he's here today as well to show uh, how we can use our new DVOs in Adobe Premiere Pro. We've just announced that there are nine tools that you can use in this program. These are brick wall, chroma, clarity, decompress, grain, pixel, regrain, sharpen, and velvet. And these DVO plugins are currently compatible with Premiere Pro on Windows, and M Series Mac and Intel Mac version is coming soon. Um, hi, Pedro. Oh, love it. Yeah, interactive. Please say hello. Um, we've been working on this for some time. So, a massive congratulations to our team for getting these out there. And uh, we're really excited to see what you guys will be able to do with this new tech. And if you have any questions as we go through the demo, please do submit them. Or even if you just want to say hi, um, we'll make sure to answer your questions. And if not, there is time at the end also uh, for more specific questions. Um, this is also recorded. So if you miss out on anything or you want to go back, don't worry. Uh, we'll up be uploading this really soon for mm. you to be watching. Now, without further ado, I will leave you to Fabio. Take it away. Ah, uh, well. Hi, everyone. So the idea behind this, uh, well, this classroom uh, session is to properly it's not like to use the to use the, the dbo plugins in a in let's say in a context of a of a, of a real working environment of, of as as real as we can get like a, a working environment here in the in like in a stream so i have three timelines and i'm gonna show you different like uh, the different problems that we have in, in these three timelines and how we can deal with these problems using the, using the dbo plugins so the first one that we have here is called the Cove. This is was a uh, underwater like uh, documentary. So you have a lot of like sea life and everything here. Um, the one of the main issues that you have here is usually when you have like a low source, um, low bit rate, and mostly low bit rate and low low bit depth uh, source is that you get a lot of banding. So banding is uh, if you can see here, this kind of streaks like uh, lines that separate. Uh, the different gradients of uh, of a picture because it doesn't have enough enough information to show them as a as a as a gradient. It needs to show them as steps. So in order for us to to deal with this banding, we can start using one of our tools that we have here. It's called uh, decompress. So decompress is a, has three different options. The first one that we're gonna see is gonna be dealing especially with the banding. So if we go here to video effects here on, on Premiere and we go to Filmworks, we have this, this is all the DBO that we have available here. We're gonna go decompress to the one, the one that we have, we want that we want. Uh, by default, it's gonna start everything. So it's gonna, it's gonna be using edge clean, D block and D-band at the same time. Uh, we don't want to deal with edge clean at the moment, neither the block, because uh, I think the issue here is the blocks, mostly the debanding. So let's zoom in here so I can show you properly what's the debanding doing here. Uh, also, it may get some type of uh, compression due to the streaming. So you may not properly see some of these things, but let's try our, our best. So when you do the debanding, just trying to smoothen these gradients. So you see here, when it's enabled, we can start smoothing these gradients. So when you get to, let's say, when you try to do a, 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 a when you do a, a, when you're doing mastering or you're doing like any type of uh, a, any 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 other procedure, you get like smooth gradients from from this type of uh, for this type of footage without uh, without any without any any type of noise reduction or anything like that. Just just trying to recover that those that that lost bit depth that you get from from the from the banding. But let's say let's do another ex experiment here. Let's say let's see another let's see another problem here. So in this in this shot, uh, well originally this uh, this documentary was interlaced. 
so we need to pretty interlace it in order for us to 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 work on it but you can see here you start getting some vertical line artifacts so what happens is, is that when you get um let me disable this so what happens is when you get to the interlace this type of footage sometimes uh, the interlace algorithm doesn't completely um eliminate all of these vertical uh, all, all of the all of the fields like remnants so you get this type of vertical artifact where you where there is some still like there are some 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 lines is still on the footage so one of the neat tricks that i found is that you uh, we have a one of our dbos is called brickwall so brickwall is mostly used as a as a low pass filter so you can filter some type of frequencies depending of of what of, of what type of footage that you have so the good thing about brick wall is that it lets you choose between the horizontal frequencies and vertical frequencies so you can play with that in order for for you to clean this type of artifact as well so this is going to, this is going to happen when you have a lot of uh, footage that is mostly um, archival footage uh, pre that like, sometimes you get like a um, interlaced footage that was that was incorrectly saved as a as a progressive file so so it doesn't have the proper flags to do the inter the, the interlacing so you, you you get these artifacts or even when you do the properly interlacing you still get some type of remnant or like this so one of the neat things about about brick wall is that you can do the cut up here I'm going to show you so we we don't, we don't want to mess with the horizontal we want to mess mostly with the vertical lines so you can see here we are minimizing those lines also we are messing a bit with the with the with the clarity with the sharpness so you don't want to go all the way but if you go all the way and you fix this issue then later you can do a sharpening and increase the um, increase the sharpness that you lost because it's better to do the sharpening after you clean like this type of uh, mistake this type of um, this type of 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 frequencies that you don't want to use and and then you amplify then you increase the contrast because let, let's do, let's do it let's do it that way let's do the brick wall first and then we do the sharpening so the idea is here that if when you're doing the sharpening, you're only sharpening the details that that you really want, not not the noise, not the not the mistakes. So that will be like a common. It's like it's like when you are doing film restoration and you start you first do the the clarity or the or the grain reduction, then you do the the sharpening, because you don't want to amplify the the noise, you don't want to amplify the mistakes. You want first the image to be clean and then you do the the amplifying. Okay, you want to close this. Oh. Stopping. Okay. Oh, sorry for that. Okay. Okay. So, in order for me to see properly what I'm doing with the sharpening tool, I'm gonna go full screen. Well, not full screen, but I'm gonna increase the viewer. And the good thing about the sharpening tool here in the, in, in in the DBOs is gonna be the same that we have the, the one that we have in Nucora or Phoenix. So it's mostly gonna be using um it's mostly gonna be sharpening the the low frequencies, not not the, not the high frequencies. So you're not gonna get a lot of noise and you're not gonna get any ringing artifacts. So even the default settings are gonna be a a, a good like we'll say good starting point for most of, of the projects that you're working. You can always play with the with the settings that we have here and they are completely like this they are completely the same if you are used to be working on on phoenix or nukora it, you find that the settings are going to be exactly the same and they do exactly the same thing and you can even do a mask if you want to contain this um this let's say you only want to sharpen the the face you can do a mask here and you can only sharpen the face of the of the actress or or whatever so you have complete control. So and these are and these uh, masks are, are integrated with the with the whole premiere uh, with with the whole DF DBO. So okay, let me. I'm gonna delete that. I'm just gonna give you a quick sharpening of the. Okay. 
so you can see first we start doing with first we went uh, first we deal with the with the brick wall with the um, with those vertical lines like here why do you choose and, vertical over horizontal just out of curiosity yeah because here uh, the the horizontal lines are not really an issue for us because if we were to like um, use horizontal lines we will start losing details on the on the on on the horizontal frequencies but the ones right. that we want to mess is the ones with, with with the vertical because when you have like interlaced fields so let's say one one field comes first and then the second field the, the second field comes i mean it, the issue is that those fields are vertical they are not yeah. horizontal yeah okay. so that's that's the mostly the issue so for most of the part when you're gonna deal with this kind of stuff it's gonna be vertical it's not gonna be horizontal okay good to know thank you yeah yeah okay and then we do the sharpening so we can we now get a, a more more usable picture so for the next example i want to do like a complete workflow let's say of uh this this was uh, a dvd of a uh, of a classic anime this we can see here this anime is anime opening um we can see here the most of the classic defects of a dvd of or, or of an f mpeg2 compression like uh, or or mpeg2 compression in general so you can see here we have a lot of uh, block uh, blocking artifacts we had a lot of noise the chroma is completely out of place i um, mean yeah you, you can you can see a lot of the the, the issues that we have here so in here we can do like a complete workflow of what could be like a, a restoration of this type of footage. So first let's start with DBO decompress. So DBO decompress is probably gonna do the, the brunt of the work. And then we start like, um, then we can start doing another processes. So here we're gonna be using, uh, the first one that we're gonna be using D block because you can see here we have a lot of blocks. Uh, when you're when you're doing uh, when you have uh, MPEG two sources, so this this issue was called macro blocking because they when they use this compression they use gigantic blocks of information in order to save uh, space. The problem is when you when you start seeing this footage in a in a normal or in a production environment now, so these blocks start start uh, being an issue. Okay, so we're gonna do, uh, we have the different settings for aggressiveness here. In this case, we are gonna go all the way to brutal. Um, problem is that it's, we can go to, a, we can maybe go to max and then go all the way, but I think going to brutal and then decreasing a bit is gonna, is gonna yield better results. You can see here, we are smoothing those macro blocks. They are not completely gone because we still have compression artifacts, but those macro blocks are getting smooth. And then we can start doing a little of the banding here. Uh, the banding as well, we can go all the way to, to the last setting, uh, or we can go to max and then go all the way. If we want to wanna see exactly what the debanding is doing, we can go here yeah no probably here so we can see that we are okay let me check yeah yeah you can see here on on the that is getting a bit more smooth we don't most of this is going to be here related to the to the blocking let's let's do Let's turn let's turn a DBO decompress on and off so you can see exactly what it's doing to the to those gigantic blocks. So that's our main concern first. And then in order to complement this, we can start doing, let's say, uh, so we we have we got we got to this point. I mean it's working. Um but if we want to go further, maybe we can we can do another extra process. Maybe we wanna do a late, let's say we wanna fix those chroma issues because a lot of this, a lot of the problems that you had with that you get with this MPEG two um, with with this MPEG two footage 
is that you can see here there is a lot of uh, colors that are out of place. You yeah. see that there is like yellow, like uh, magenta, yeah. the greens, maybe the yellows, some, the greens, the yellows. So we want to so we want to make those all those colors uh, either or to disappear or to fall into place. So one of the things that we can use as well is video chroma here. So let me let me add video chroma here as well. So uh, since this footage is a bit, um, since this footage is really, really compressed, we we may need to be way more aggressive than we are used to. If we go all the way, it's not going to completely destroy the picture. It really depends on the type of footage that you're working. When you're working with this type of animation, you can go all the way, and it's not going to affect that much of the picture as if you were working with, uh, let's say, uh, live action footage. But and then one week, once we go all the way with the string, we can start setting the coarseness. And here with the coarseness, you can see what's the biggest uh, the biggest changes in the in the color uh, in in the how the colors are are located in the picture. So we need to go to a place where we know that the white is going to be completely white and it's not going to be mixed with the reds like this. So it should be somewhere around here. No, around here, kind of. So we need to zoom in on this part because if, if you see the complete picture, you're probably gonna, not going to see these artifacts, or not gonna, you're not going to see these artifacts as, 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 as noticeable. But by doing this, let's say we can turn this on and off so you can see exactly what DBO Chroma is doing here. So you can see here a lot of those colors that are here, like you can see a lot of those random colors are completely gone once we once we enable DBO Chroma. So that's the idea. So we're cleaning the we're cleaning the picture one step at a time. And now uh, maybe we can render this and and then do another process. Or let's 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 um, let's try punishing this machine. So. Uh, <laughs> So let's try to do in another process on top. So maybe the, let's say you, you want to completely get rid of this uh, compression artifacts that you, start, that you have here. So one of the ideas will be to use any type of noise reduction or grain reduction. And in this case, we can use Velvet as well. So Velvet works well either on film or video. But the idea, since it's one of our, our most aggressive like um, noise reduction solutions. Uh, it works really good for 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 video compression as well. So let's go here, and you can see uh, I I haven't touched anything, and it's already done a lot of the heavy weight here. Obviously, we have lost a lot of details here in the um, in the flowers and everything here, but. Uh, the idea is to try to, let's say, adjust the the settings so we know exact, so we can save exactly what we want. Uh, let me increase the safety here. Maybe doing that will retain some of these pictures, some of the features. If not, then we we'll start to, then we'll have to lower down the. The amount. Either way, if we are happy with what is doing on the whole, on, on let's say on the main subject, then after we can do a sharpening on, on these details as well. So it really depends on what you want to sacrifice at the moment or not. But I, I really, lo I really like what it's doing here, like on on the main subject. Yeah, it looks so oh. smooth. It's so clean. Yeah, uh -huh. especially for this type, this type of animation, like when you wanna. It, is it, since this is not a this is a video source this is not a, a, a film source you don't want any type of uh, texture because it shouldn't have any texture because texture in video is noise but it's not the same as in as in film when you have the texture is grain so you want to keep that in video you usually don't want to retain the the noise yeah absolutely. Uh, because, yeah 
So it, 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 especially in these cases, maybe you want to go be a, be, a, be a bit more aggressive and then do a sharpening. Maybe you can do the velvet here and then do a sharpening and then regrain uh, mm. the, the picture so we can like get, uh, we can like create some fake, uh, like um, some fake detail. Really yeah. depends on what, what, what kind of like, um, uh, what kind of workflow you wanna you wanna achieve with this? Yeah, but I that's think it's the really main idea. That you can isolate like mm. the flowers and things like that and uh -huh. go back and tweak yeah. it how you want. That's uh -huh. really nice. So the idea is, let's say we're going from something like this. Let me no, let me see if it completely loads. Yeah, the idea is we're going from some from from the compression like this to something like this. That it really, really cleans up the picture. Absolutely. Uh huh. Like I told you, we need, we may need to tweak something here in order for us to save those those flowers. But everything else, I think, is looking really good. Yeah. For all the purposes that you want to use this uh, this footage, you can see it looks almost like like digital video. Like. Mm. Yeah, you can see here. It's yeah, doing all those a great details job. Just and, get all, blurred through. Yeah. And you are not, yeah, and you are not mangling the picture. You are uh, the, the details are there. The, the low frequency details are there. We only, we are only destroying those like uh, those compression artifacts, those high frequencies that we don't really care. Mm. So that's the main idea. But you can tweak as well, and you can also like do sharpening this after and everything else. And then uh, I want to do another another example. Here is most of uh, say like a um modern footage so this look this is from a movie and so you get like um so when you have this night footage and you, and you need to maybe increase the iso to be like uh even like i don't know to the fullest uh, that 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 the sensor can handle you just start getting like either you uh, the deep the dead pixels start showing up and you start getting a lot of noise. So in this case, we have, we have both issues at the same time. We had a lot of noise. We, if we zoom in here, yeah, you can see there is a lot of noise on the on the picture. But also, we have a lot of dead pixels. I mean, there is some of some of these pixels can be uh, can be seen by the naked eye. You can see here that we have two blue two blue dead pixels here. And here on the, um, here, maybe if I recall correctly, there is one over here as well. You can see there's a green one here. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, I mean, and these are gigantic because usually, usually you, you, cannot, you cannot see this like uh, without any special, uh, without, without any color correction, but uh, I mean, there is another one over here, but I cannot really see it right now. Well, the idea is that before we do anything else, before we do the the um, the noise reduction or any type of process that we want to do, even the color correction, we can start doing the, the pixel fix. So we're gonna use DBO pixel here. So DBO pixel is uh, is gonna detect automatically where the pixels are located. So it's gonna find those places where the pixel is is gonna be stationary, where the pixel is a single color or or, or it has a, or it has different like say uh, uh, or, or it is a single or it is a thing in a single channel working the, all all channels at the same time. But if we wanna if we wanna help ourselves to see exactly where a, where a pixel is located, I have a, well there is a neat trick that that we use in, in BFX or it's called gamma slamming. So gamma slamming is to do a temporal uh, color correction only on the viewer. In this case, we cannot do the, the color correction on the viewer. You need to use a, like a lumetri um, adjustment here in order to increase the contrast and to see exactly where those pixels are located. So you know you know that this, this pixel was here and you can see also that we have another set of pixels here, especially this one. 
that's so clever. It just stands out so much more than it did before. Yeah, because the idea is that, that, is that these pixels, since they have no information left or they couldn't like handle all the information, I mean, they're going to be either one or zero. Right. So if you if you increase the contrast to, to the few list, they're gonna be they're gonna be noticeable. So you know exactly where they are. So if you yeah. start doing the, so if you start doing the the automatic detection, you can you can see them. You can know exactly what which one of them you want to deal with first. Or it, because here in DBO Pixel, you can I'm gonna disable this. Here in DBO Pixel, you can also set an ROI. You can set a region of interest, either for exclusion or, or inclusion, if you want to. If you want only to deal with, let's say, uh, certain parts of the picture, because you know, maybe you have a lot of lights on the background, on, and those lights ca can be misinterpreted as, as, always, as a DBO, as a dead pixel as well. Especially small lights, small, like uh, specular lights can be mis misinterpreted as a, as a dead pixel. So you want to do exclusion or inclusion as well. But in this case, uh, I, I choose this footage because yeah, we have this fire. And this fire has a lot of like small particles of fire, small particles of light that could be like a misinterpreted as that. So I want to see how the default settings, how the automatic settings of DBO pixel recognizes this and handles with this that pixels in this picture. So let's enable DBO pixel. And I'm going to show you the, I'm going to enable the, the draw pixel so it can show you exactly where the pixel is located and i'm gonna enable the burning overlay so it's gonna show you where the detection is happening here mm. it takes a bit i can see that daniel's just commented say hasta la vista baby for dead pixels <laughs> a good motto yeah <laughs> yeah you can see this this is the all the pixel that it has detected you can see even the colors of the of the um, of the detection mm, it picks everything up yeah so maybe you don't want it to be that aggressive. I mean, when you when you're dealing with a really really high ISO um, um, footage, yeah, you're gonna get a lot of dead pixels because not of not all of the not all of the sensor is gonna capture light at the same time. So it's not it's not, it's not gonna be that um, we'll say it's not gonna be that constant. So maybe you want to decrease the detection if you feel that the the detection is way too much. Maybe you wanna go like let's say to uh, the, the default is 75%. Maybe you want to go to 50 or to 60. Really depends on on, on the type of footage you're working. I, I choose this footage because I, we want it to, to go like all the way. Yeah. But if you wanna if you wanna decrease the detection, it's gonna be a bit more conservative of what is of what is and it's not a, a dead mm. pixel. Because like I told you, is I mean you wanna you want the dead pixels to be gone, but you also want to preserve the, the the specular highlights, especially when you get this type of like say fire or lights in the background. Yeah. But let's 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 try the, the the default settings and let's see what it's doing. I'm gonna disable the burning overlay. Uh, be sure to disable the burning overlay be, before doing the rendering because the overlay is gonna is gonna get burning like like the name says. Okay, so I'm gonna render that. It's, it, uh, DBO pixel is a bit heavy, so it's going to take a bit to to properly render. And this is one of the DBOs that you need to be uh, doing the, the 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 you need to be doing the caching uh, here, like uh, in Premiere, mm. before before doing the playback, because it's not going to be possible to do the playback in real time. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's important to get this done first. Yeah. I mean, it's quite easy. You just set the in and out, and then press enter, and then mm. it's gonna be like, uh, yeah, it's gonna be rendering that. So now we have everything rendered here, and let's let's find out where those. Um... Okay, let's find out where those the pixels were located, so I can show you exactly. Oh, okay, in and out. Okay. okay, let me show you exactly what it was. I don't really remember what it was. Okay, okay, here. Okay. Yeah. 
There we go, yeah. Yeah, here we got one. It was really gigantic. It was like two, two yeah. in one. Now it's gone. And now there's, Amazing. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you as well here. We, I mean, we have a lot of like small uh, particles of fire, and only the pixels are gone. Not not th yeah, those yeah, particles yeah. of fire are, are are remain in place. Here as well, that we have a lot of fire here. Uh, it's we are so not clever doing how it can differentiate between yeah. kind of the sparks and what is actually a dead pixel. It's brilliant. So you're not destroying the picture. You're not destroying the details. You're not. You're only messing with those dead pixels. So if you got like a QC report from from Netflix, from Disney, from from Prime Video, whatever, you're gonna go. You're gonna go. Uh, most likely, the automatic settings or the default settings are gonna find exactly what you want. And if you need to, you can like mess around and see exactly what you wanna see and find exactly what you wanna find. Um, because usually those reports get you like this this exact place where you where you want to search for those for those dead pixels here as well you can see that this one that it was really was not really that that bright gets also deleted and only that nothing else changes so that's a good one and yeah. finally what i want to show you here is that um one of the great things that we have here and with the DBO tools as well is that we get a uh, three three different types of uh noise reduction uh, uh solutions the first one being like i'm gonna show you here so here the the main one and the the one that most people like is always going to be clarity and yeah and Classic. for this type of footage that that we have like a lot of like this is like this is not really heavy grain this is like a really soft a soft noise um it's digital noise but it's really soft but you can go all the way and it's going to give you a, a really great result so let me let me try doing that okay One of the things that you need to be aware when you're doing with when you're dealing with noise reduction in this is that you may want to render this as well. And you you can choose like a single frame, do the adjustments, and then once it's ready, you you hit render and it's gonna be pretty much uh, the usual workflow here. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna disable this for a bit so I can adjust this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I want to go all the way here. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things that people also like about Gibio Clarity is that you can do a little bit of sharpening after the fact, after you have done the, the, the grain or the denoising, you can do a bit of sharpening. And you can also do that with a Gibio Sharpen as well, but it, it's nice to have this sharpening tool inside of, the, of Clarity as well. But I'm going yeah. all the way here. So I'm gonna enable this and then I'm gonna render and then we're gonna wait for a bit once it's for it to render. Would you say the tools are kind of easy to use? They seem quite manageable and like very flexible how you adjust everything. Yeah, yeah, everything, every single, uh, uh, let's say, adjustment that you are used to in, in Phoenix or Nucora is here. So if you have every single option, uh, like I told you, uh, you can even, you, you see those masks there, you can even you do the masking and just apply to that place if you want to. And everything inside here of, of Premiere, let's say you're working on a documentary, let's say you're working with a lot of archival footage as well, and you want everything to be like done inside of, 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 of Premiere, it can be done here, so with the DBO tools as well. So here we have uh, the result of DBO Clarity. You can see it's only messing with those high frequency noise. So it's giving you a clean, a clearer background without introducing any type of, of ghosting. That's what people like the most about, um, about DBO Clarity. It gives you uh, a clean output 
without any type of temporal artifact. Yeah. No, it so looks like Uh huh. And even the sharpening that it gets at the end get, help, helps you increasing those of those high frequencies, those low frequencies that you want to preserve as well. So that's basically it for all the for all the plugins that we have here in in, in Premiere. No, well, you went you did a good whistle stop tour of everything that you can do with with Premiere. Um, well, if people have questions, this is absolutely the time to send them in. Um, and if they're curious, I have one. Would you say that the DVOs are easy to use? Yeah, yeah, most they are like I, like I, like I show you that are uh, drop um, just you need to drop them into the into the clip or to a, to to an adjustment layer and they're pre you're pretty much set up. And yeah. most of the default settings, I would say most of the default settings work out of the box, so you don't need to to mess a lot with them. I mean, I like to mess because I'm 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 used to it, but you you can just set it to the default settings. Most of the time, it's going to be working okay. Especially with sharpen and velvet, I think it's, it works really good right out of the box. Right out of the box. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, does that mean that these tools are easy to learn if you're a new user as well? Like, if you're coming from Phoenix, then perhaps you know um, what you're doing. But if you're just picking this up, do you think it's pretty self-explanatory? Yeah, it's really, really, really uh, self-explanatory. I mean, the only one that I would say needs a bit of tinkering is a big one because you need to be aware of what is a frequency like a vertical and horizontal frequency but everything else i think is really really straight out uh, really straightforward with the with, with the solution that is trying to to fix nice um i think we're still waiting for if people want to send something in this is your moment um mm -hmm. what would you say is your favorite tool in premiere pro then uh, I think the, the most useful one is going to be decompress because I, I work with a lot of footage. Uh, I mean, I, I work with a lot of clients that, that deal with like archival footage. And having a decompression tool here works a lot because usually when you, let's say, uh, when you are editing archival footage, you interpret the original interlaced footage and then you output a progressive file for, for color or for whatever. So the usual workflow is to is to get the, the original interlaced footage here. So having the decompression like uh, tools here, get, it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of like processes. So when you're going to finishing, when you're going to color, you don't need to do this. To, you, need, you don't need to do that again, or you don't need to conform to the original uh, interlaced file. You you may you you can use the progressive output from 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 Premiere, and it's gonna be working uh, quite good. Yeah, absolutely. It looks yeah, yeah it does, it just looks really like easy to use and it looks mm -hmm. very simple and straightforward, which is very helpful. Oh, I've got a question from Ahmed. He says after La Vista Baby. Agreed. <laughs> Always brilliant, Fabio. Always I appreciate all your advice, tricks and tips. I have a question about how long the DVOs would take time comparing other effects toolbox in rendering. Uh, I mean, if you do this, if you do a pre-render like I'm doing here, like pressing play, it's gonna be quite automatic. It's gonna be saved uh, into the cache of of Premiere. Uh, but let me let me show you here on on this result. If I if I'm going one by one here, let's say only decompress. If I'm only place, if I'm only gonna render decompress, it's gonna be quite fast. You can see here it's like it's taking like 20 seconds or so, and this is 424 uh, frames. It's quite a lot of frames. I mean, the only one that is a bit heavy uh, at the moment is is um, pixel because it needs to detect a lot of pixels at the same time. But decompress it renders quite fast. Uh, DBO Chrome as well it renders quite fast. I mean, I mean we are doing less than a minute or less than less than 30 seconds on some of on some of this and we are dealing with like 400 or, or 500 frames at the time when you are rendering this to a to an output if you take like i say like if you take this cache uh you take this cache or this previous uh for for that final render then it's gonna be like automatic it's gonna be like really it's gonna be instantaneous
I'm really there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have another question, this time from Michael. Hi, hi, Michael, all the team at Jupiter Tech. Uh, Fabio, with DVO Pixel, can you select the area of a dead pixel with shift left mouse click in Premiere? Yeah, uh, problem is that the, at the moment it's a bit heavy. The, um, it's a bit heavy, the, the, um, the DVO Pixel is a bit heavier for the, for the for let me check here okay you can create here like a we, we can you can do the the mask as well but you don't have like the, the same integration that you have like for for creating those like pixels like a, a like areas like we have in, in Phoenix or in, in, it's mostly for a, a, like an automatic tool for the whole setting, but you can do, like I told you, uh, a region of interest or a region, region of exclusion if you want to be a bit more careful where you want the pixel to be located. Good question, Michael. <laughs> Um, keep them coming, guys. If there are any more that you want to ask, we still have a little bit of time. Um, but yeah, it's been very, very explanatory, Fabio. You're very good at mm -hmm. going through and taking us through all the details that we need to know. Um, Myla's back. Hi, Myla. Last call, guys. Anything else you want to know whilst we have Fabio? Should be possible. Oh, if I draw this, yeah. Okay, let me check. Yeah, yeah, you can only draw a mask, but you cannot do the, the right click or the left click here. Yeah. But it's a great idea, Michael. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you need, you need to draw a mask, yeah. Got to thank you. Got to thank you for everything from Kushik mm -hmm. Bhattacharya. You're very, very mm -hmm. welcome, Kushik. Well, I think guys. that is, I think that's everything. Yeah, and, uh, I think so too. So thanks everyone for watching and this will be on our YouTube for you to comment if you have any questions over there. Um, thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for your time, Fabio. Thanks for the demo um, and for coming out. No, an thanks honor. everyone from, from joining. And thank you, yeah. Myla, for organizing. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, as well. <laughs> uh, well, I'll see you all soon. Thanks, everyone, for joining. See you. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.